So a couple days ago before the new year, I was doing some cleaning and I ran across this. Now to you, this might just be a regular old USB, but to me, this brings me back, honestly. This brings me back so many memories of last decade because this stuck with me for a very long time. This is the same USB that I had when I was homeless, when I was couch surfing, when I was on the west side of Chicago at a friend's house sleeping on the ground where there was roaches and rats, where I was in welcome places, where if I try to sleep somewhere comfortable like a couch, I would get snapped at like a dog. This was with me when I was in community college and I was broke. I had no laptop. The laptop I had previously had so many viruses on it that I, it cost me way more to fix it than to even get a new one. Like, and I had no money because everybody knows when you're a college student, you're broke and you're just entering the world. You don't have nothing. The only thing I had on here was FL Studio 10. And then I also had both Boy Wonder drum kits and a cardiac drum kit. That was it. Now, while I was in school, I would go to the computer lab and make beats. They were sounding terrible. They sounded like Cassidy, but I finally found something that I was good at, that I felt like I was good at. And I knew I wasn't gonna give no for an answer. I wasn't gonna say no when I was going through all of that life-changing shit. I wasn't gonna say no when I didn't have a laptop. I wasn't gonna say no at all. Shit, I was so committed to it that I failed an English class based on Batman. Yes, Batman. Crazy. And the one thing that really held me down was one shots. Now I know a lot of people, you know, they're talking about one shots now, but one shots have always been a thing. I actually remember making a video, a couple videos about this, like on IG a year ago. But this takes me way back because I used to just install a whole bunch of VSTs in between class and then find my favorite sounds, render them out, and then adjust the settings and play with them. And if you don't know what one shots are, Basically, you just record one note and then render it. Like I just explained, mess with the settings and then boom, you get the you get the gist of it. So what does that have to do with today's video? I'm gonna be making some samples as well as probably some beats, as well as, you know, show you my new pack that I just released. I have the flu right now, so forgive me if I sound crazy, but my head is killing me right now, but I'm, I'm going through with this video though because it's super important. Some real MVP Jordan game six type of shit. So I'm gonna show you guys what you can do with one shots. I'm gonna show you guys some gems as well as, you know, just some little things you can do with them. And, you know, I'm going to show you guys what's in the pack as well, because there's sounds from analog keyboards like the Prophet 6, the Juno DI. Um, they've been processed through analog gear as well. This isn't just recording Omnisphere sounds. This is actually like stuff you're never going to find because they've been either uniquely crafted from scratch or, you know, they've been from previous beats. I even put some of my favorite sounds from there, just, you know, as like a homage to what I used to do in school and shit like that. So I'm gonna jump in FL and I'm just gonna show you guys just the process in general. So I got this one right here. And how you use that is you just normalize it, go to volume and then you just adjust the settings. So if I reset everything, I'll just change the attack, decay, sustain and release. So change the attack, bring the hold out bring the decay, sustain, and release. If I want the release to be very just like subtle, then, you know, I'll just bring the release down. So it sounds like that. But if I want the sounds to gel together, so when I play chords and then I jump to the next chord, it still kind of has that, that feel. You'll get what I'm saying. Yeah, it's kind of cool. All right, so let's make a sample really fast. Oh, fuck. Now, if I want this sound to be more unique, I would just go to the LFO settings and then just bring the amount all the way up and then adjust the speed and then change the attack time. So if I wanted to have a little bit of a, you know, a little a tremolo to it. Now, 
I would do that and just adjust the amount. Uh, one thing you can do also is go to here, turn this max all the way up, and then just adjust the settings. So I'm gonna go and find the setting that's best for this. And just like that, it sounds even more unique. So I'm gonna add some more stuff and then we can keep on building to this. All right, let's add some textures to this. So I rendered out the sample and to save time for the video I just skipped past all the drums and stuff like that and you know I just put some basic drums on it and added some RC20 and just probably pitched it up or down I forgot but this is what it sounds like. Uh, you know, something cool, something I could work with for right now. So yeah, uh, let's move on to the second beat now. So since this is a one shot, I'm just going to adjust the ADSR to tighten up the sound just so everything doesn't bleed over. Thank you. 
You see how I'm able to go through all the sounds and find the sound that I want fast? If I use a VST, then depending on how well my computer runs, it will take me super long to go through all of those presets and find the sound that I want. Especially if you have a weak computer and you're using something like Contact, it'll take you forever to go through just the sounds. And then you'll end up losing the idea. Alright, so this is what the second beat sounds like. Uh, I did decide to change the hi-hats because I felt like it was getting too stagnant and too boring. So I switched them out and I kind of did like some sizzle kind of hi-hats. So that's gonna be it for today's video guys i hope you guys enjoyed the pack remember the link is down in the description below so if you guys want to cop it and you guys like these sounds definitely go crazy with it because i enjoyed making it and this kit means a lot to me so yeah uh i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you guys enjoyed the gems from this video as well and you know let me know down in the comments down below what else you guys want to see and what else you guys think of this video and if you guys like this kind of video, because I know there's a big difference when I show my face and when I don't show my face. So, I don't know. I just want things to be more personal and shit, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, on that note, I'm gonna go take this NyQuil, go knock the fuck out, and try to get rid of this flu. So that way I can make more videos for everywhere. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today, and go cop the kit. <laughs>
Oh, so you're still watching the video. If you are, you're a real one and I appreciate you. One of my favorite things in the world is video games. And I used to love how Sonic and Super Mario used to have like secret levels or how when you were a kid and used to get Game Informer, they used to have like secret codes like in Grand Theft Auto that if you put them, you used to get like a special gun or something like that. And I kind of wanted to create that vibe too. Kind of like when you go see a Marvel movie and you wait all the way past the credits just to see the cutscene and they might reveal somebody. So I'm gonna give you guys a super big gem. So I'm gonna show you guys how Forty does his reverse chord trick without actually rendering out and reversing the sound. So this is how it goes. All right, so go inside the battery pack kit and just pick any sound. So I'm gonna go and pick this pluck over here. Now I'm gonna go to the instrument tab to go to the attack, decay, sustain, and release. I'm gonna leave the attack alone and then I'm gonna leave the hold all the way out and bring down the decay, sustain, and release. Now I'm gonna throw the Fruity Convolver on there just to gel the sound together and give it that ambient vibe. The Fruity Convolver is super slept on by the way. That's another big gem. Now you can adjust the hold to taste. So I'm just gonna reset it and then I'm gonna put some chords in here. Now I'll hear how it sounds. If I want the chords to be tighter, I'll bring the hold in a little bit more. And then I'll go to the tension knob and then adjust the attack. So if you guys enjoyed this trick, don't tell nobody. Let them find out on their own. So yeah, comment down below and I'll see you guys next time.